Hi, um, I'm Cynthia Kramer. I'm running for state representative in the 87th district. I want to thank you so very much for giving me this opportunity to introduce myself. As I started this process, I realized that um, it's kind of hard to get to know people uh, when they come to your door and maybe drop a piece of literature and we all have a lot of mail every day and this is just an opportunity to give you a, a, an idea of who I am and what I believe in and what I stand for and I hope at the end of that that you'll agree I am the person to best represent and serve you in Jefferson City. Thank you. I entered this race because it became very clear to me that um, there was one philosophy of governance that was um, being implemented and um, that there's a philosophy of I've been elected so I know what's best for everyone and I am the ultimate vote. My belief is that the entire scope of democracy and representation is that you go to people and you engage them and you find out what's important to them and you take those issues to Jefferson City and you work on those issues and if there is a vision that's in place that maybe the district has not had an opportunity to really fully recognize you bring that back to them and you say here's what's going on and if there's disagreement, you can potentially find common ground or new ideas from the people you serve. Um, or you can explain to them what, why you think the way you do. Ultimately, I know that when you do that process, um, you can actually find the best voice of the majority. And you can take that voice and cast your votes through the will of the people and the voice of the people you serve. To, to me, that is public service. I do not feel it's appropriate that when you walk into a government building, um, somebody's mind is completely made up and closed to you based on their ideology. That, that, that representatives have an obligation to respectfully listen and be engaged, and then after it's all over, make those decisions. And so I have knocked door to door and I have never tried to dissuade someone and tell them their opinion was wrong and I was right and, and instead I've listened to them and I've heard their, their side and I think that we have to make sure that we're listening to all sides. We have always had to grapple with advances in medicine and, and how we felt about that and as a patient who really has dealt with an adult stem cell transplant issue where mine has failed, um, the next opportunity would be that unrelated donor, which we all have heard of people going to a, a bone marrow bank and trying to find someone who matches. It's very difficult if you don't have siblings and, um, or someone who matches in your family. And so the opportunity to take a donated egg, which if we think about it, women have been donating eggs for 25 years and if somebody wanted to donate a kidney or, or a, for a liver transplant, we all think that's great. So if my friend wanted to donate an egg, I mean, that's her decision. So, so with that, the egg is taken and it has two parts, a yolk and then the other white sort of gooby part. And the, the yolk is really the nucleus and it's that nucleus that gets removed. And then um, think of a, a cell on your body that rejuvenates, such as a skin cell. And that skin cell has a yolk, a nucleus as well. And so you take out that yolk and you take the donated goop that's had the yolk, the nucleus removed, and you put in your skin cell nucleus, your yolk. And they're in a Petri dish, then they're given some chemicals and stimulation, and they begin to replicate. Uh, no different than living cells replicating for a skin graft for a burn victim. They're living cells, they're replicating. And so what concerns me is that, is that we're, we're hearing all sorts of, of different sides, but are we really looking at where we've been in the past with grappling with um, 
the former president of Yale in the 1800s who thought that we shouldn't pursue a smallpox vaccine. I mean, clearly we've all benefited from that research. So I really respect everyone's right to have an opinion and respect how people feel. I just want to make sure that people have the full broad picture of where we've been, what it's like to walk in those shoes as a patient, and where it can take us uh, in terms of the potential to grow your own cells and heal your body in a way that um, will not give you those, uh, potentially give you those devastating side effects. We all know someone who has been ill or, 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 uh, or is currently ill. Um, and we ourselves may find uh, that we're patients. And so to access the finest healthcare in your state is phenomenal. I mean, um, because it allows you to have the support system that you might not otherwise have if you had to leave the state. It's concerning also because the more that we do not have the legislature respecting the will of the people and trying to impede the spirit of any amendment, and we have seen this happen before with other issues in Missouri, um, then what really, what really happens then is that corporations and scientists and, and acad ac people in academics become concerned that they're not going to be able to do this work here. And so again, when they're making a decision on where should I go in the country, we will not be one of the places they'll be looking at. I want my children to be proud to be from Missouri. I want them to feel that the life-saving research, the cutting edge medicine that helped their mother will be there for them. That they can go to a university, be it public or private, and they are going to be able to get the best education because we have provided that as, as a state, we have built that infrastructure because that's what state government is about, building that infrastructure. And then when they move away from education, I want them to be able to go into a workforce that's going to complement that and make sure that they can raise their children here and access um, the brightest future in, in every way, health, education, and, uh, and economically. When I get to Jefferson City, I'm going to honor the spirit of Amendment 2 and the will of the people and make sure that there are not restrictions placed on public dollars so that we're all together and moving in the direction that we all know is the best for Missouri. I am doing this because I have children and you have children and you have grandchildren. This is about what is our purpose? Our purpose is to be of service to the next generation, to provide a better life. Now, I am often uh, told, you know, you can't be a one-issue candidate. And I say, I'm not. Because stem cell is not a one-issue point. Here's what it's about. People in, in Jeff City will say to you, I don't want to hear about the economic issues of it. I don't want to talk, have that conversation. And I say, really? Because if you're representing the 87th district, you better discuss economics and finance because we're all about fiscal conservative. We are fiscally responsible in this district. And if we are having, if we have the need for economic expansion, that representative better be having that discussion. I'm going to need a couple things to make sure that I can represent you in Jefferson City. First of all, your vote. It's the most important thing. And secondly, if you're, as, if you're as excited about this race as I am, please call five friends. Invite them over to watch this, this DVD or, or call them and, and tell them what a great race this is and encourage them to cast their vote for Cynthia Kramer. And join us. Come to the office. Work the polls and make sure that at the end we have real representation for the 87th district. Thank you. This is quite the race this year. I think it's really important that people restore their sense of confidence that someone's really working for them.